The City of Portsmouth had raised uh, concerns about the full weekend closures, especially as it related to the businesses as well as the citizens in, uh, in the City of Portsmouth. Uh, they, they wrote to, uh, City Manager wrote to Aubrey Lane, the Commonwealth Transportation Board member, as well as the Mayor writing to the Governor, and a resolution from the City of Portsmouth uh, requesting that we look at alternatives to the full weekend closure. So again, what we have done, uh, Mr. Lane requested that VDOT uh, initiate a review. Uh, the governor's office, uh, through the secretary and the commissioner, directed that I lead a review of the uh, current closure plan and how could we, uh, what other options could we look at to address the concerns of the city of Portsmouth. So we've done that. We met uh, uh, last week through the weekend and again earlier this week. Uh, with the project team as well as others to look at the different options and opportunities uh, that we could uh, exercise in, in getting the work done. And with that, um, and, and I will talk about the generally the, the, the options, which were to continue with the full closure of the tunnel as we've been doing. The second option was to uh, consider bi-directional traffic in the eastbound tube. And the third option was to go to nighttime closures only. There was a fourth option that was a bit of a hybrid of nighttime and weekend closures also. So, so I'll speak very briefly about, uh, about a couple of those. Um, uh, we spent a lot of effort looking at the ability to run bi-directional traffic within the downtown tunnel. As many folks know, those tunnels, the original tube was a two-way tunnel as the Midtown Tunnel is today. But two-way traffic in these tubes creates a number of, of both traffic issues and inherent uh, safety risks. So as we looked at these, at the, the potential for running bi-directional traffic, the first thing that we looked at was ensuring that we could do it in a safe manner. And secondly, what kind of traffic impact would we have? So we've gone through that analysis. The analysis that was uh, uh, done by the TPO, uh, we frankly confirmed a lot of the assessment that they had that, that we expect delays, significant delays in both directions if we were to close the westbound tube, run bi-directional traffic in the eastbound tube. We expected delays in excess of 30 minutes for most of the daylight hours on Saturdays and Sundays as well as delay in terms of time, but also in terms of the, the length um, exceeding, in some areas, exceeding four miles. So again, that was, a, that was a, a big consideration we looked at. In addition to that, running bi-directional traffic creates some significant um, operational and safety issues, the first being overheight detection. I don't think a lot of folks realize that, that Routinely, we turn around vehicles at the downtown tunnel because they are over height. We inspect a lot more, but we actually have to turn around, on average, about 20 vehicles a day that, that come to that tunnel and that are over height. So uh, the, the process, how it works today, a vehicle hits an over height detector, there's an inspection station before the tunnel, they pull them out of the line, they measure them. If they're over height, we can turn them around and, and get them away from the tunnel. But by running bi-directional traffic, there was no opportunity for the to be able to inspect the trucks, get them out of the flow. So it's an, it's a, we would be forced to, to stop all traffic every time the detector went off to, to pull that vehicle out of the flow. So that was one of, the, one of the issues that we looked at very carefully, as well as the hazardous material cargo that goes through the tunnel and that can be as simple as a camper with propane tanks. Again, the same problem, trying to pull them out of the stream, and if, you, if we caught a vehicle going through that we had to stop, uh, we'd have to stop all traffic in both directions to get the vehicle out of the stream. So as we work through those and looking at the, the concerns of the bi-directional traffic in terms of traffic impact and the basic safety concerns, um, it was a consensus. Um, and, and decision of both VDOT and ERC that we would not run bi-directional traffic in order to complete this work. So again, that left us really with, with essentially two options. That was um, continue as we, we are with nighttime closures or to, uh, excuse me, week full weekend closures 
or to go to nighttime closures only. Uh, Mr. Lane and I met with the mayor this morning. Um, we had a very good meeting with him and, and sat down and walked through uh, much of what I've discussed today, the, the, the process that we've gone through and the, the, the uh, issues that we've had and frankly some, some solutions that we believe moving forward. With that, the city and VDOT and ERC have agreed that we will not close the tunnel, full tunnel closure for weekends like we've been doing in the past we will move to nighttime closures only. These nighttime closures will be seven nights a week. They will be from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. weeknights and then Friday night and Saturday night, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Because there's not commuter traffic on, on Saturday and Sunday morning, we're able to get, get some additional time to accomplish some important work as we move through that tunnel. So in terms of, of, of the work that's necessary to do over the next, um, over the next several weeks, it's, it's essentially 26 nighttime closures that will occur over the next several weeks to accomplish the work necessary this calendar year. The contractor will be back in the, uh, in the tunnels in the spring completing the, the uh, in the winter and spring completing the additional work in the westbound in the westbound tunnel but again in terms of what will the motorists see what will the public see between now and the end of 2013 approximately 26 nighttime closures and then again beginning in, in January they'll restart again with nighttime closures again and our commitment to the city is that we will stay with these nighttime only closures and and work with that along that that path unless we come back together and say we need to look at a, at a different option, possibly, uh, again, the option would be to go back to full closures. But at this point, we are all in agreement, and our commitment to the city and to the citizens is that we will move to, to the nighttime closures. Um, we're, again, we're very pleased that, uh, uh, that, that we've been able to come up with a solution that we believe is a balance between getting this necessary work done and the impact to the, to the public as well as as well as the motorists. The first closure will be this Friday night. So Friday night, this Friday, Saturday night, and Sunday night, the tunnels will be closed overnight only. We will not close overnight during next week, the last week of, of October. We need to make sure that we get uh, good uh, uh, releases out to the public, good public awareness that they know what's going on because uh, we think it's very important to get those, those folks that regularly travel those times, give them ample warning before we go into nighttime closures. So nighttime closures will not begin, weeknight closures will not begin until the first full week in, in November. And again, with this schedule, we expect this work to all be completed prior to the, uh, uh, around the, the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. There's certain blackout dates where we do not allow the contractor, certain holidays, and there are also a few events that we do not allow the, the contractor to be in the road, and, and we can give you those details also. There's a couple of events in Portsmouth and Norfolk that we've agreed would not impact traffic on those days. So with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you all might have, um, and I think that Tamara's going to moderate that. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> From a from a traffic management perspective, and for an efficient from an efficiency perspective, one of the things when we when we set up work zones and we do work in Virginia, the basic philosophy of get in and get out, you know, limit the amount of time that you are in the road, the amount of time that you're exposed to traffic, the amount of traffic time that traffic is exposed to you. So, with that in mind, you look at how do you how do you balance how do you try and get the least amount of traffic. How do you try and do the work with the lowest traffic volumes and the least amount of time? So again, in terms of, an, of a way of doing that, that was through these, these weekend closures. 
So we were able, because of the efficiency that you can get from a continuous operation that goes on for about 57 hours straight, and that's what the contractor is able to do, there's no downtime except at the beginning and at the end of that 57-hour period. With, with overnight closures, in, in just real rough uh, uh, numbers, it, it can take two hours or more from the time you start closing the interstate down to the time you can be really productive in doing whatever activity you're doing. You have to move equipment and materials and so on. So if you start thinking that way, you re you're, you've got about two hours on each end of each shift that is not productive time. So what it does effectively is you're in the road. We are in the road for considerably more time. When we're in the road, it, whether it's closed or not, uh, work zones uh, increase the hazard level for the public. So again, that's a, that's a real consideration. In terms of, uh, again, to the, to the uh, concerns of the businesses, when those, when those concerns were raised to us and, uh, uh, by, the, by the mayor and uh, by the city council, um, uh, Mr. Lane came to us and, and responded to the, to the city saying, we're going to look at this. We're going to look at, at what can we do to, to limit that impact, and that's what we've done. You all do economic impact studies, and we've been with you through other projects where you do things like that. Was there any analysis on the front end of this project saying, how is this going to impact Fort Smith? And even to the point of, did you speak to Kenny Wright and say, hey, what do you think? The tunnel closure, the closure plan would, was um, was well publicized in advance of, of, of this, this coming to be, and there were a number of briefings and meetings and, and those types of things to let the, let the public know uh, what we were proposing to do. In terms of an, an analysis of a particular, uh, one particular group, which is large uh, downtown merchants in Portsmouth, the answer to that part is that, that no, we, we would not, did not focus on that particular, that particular uh, business element. On, you know, on a broader level, there is a, any time we impact traffic, we impact motorists and we potentially impact business. Whether, so whether it was an overnight closure or a weekend closure, there, there, is, an, uh, there is an impact there. It frankly is very difficult to, to, to judge what that impact actually is. It's just a, it's a, uh, because of the, the, the nature of the work, it's very difficult to say there's the answer, and we just don't have that answer. So it's fair to say that in retrospect you did not foresee that closing a whole artery to a city on a weekend would not impact business. Is that fair to say? You did not foresee that impacting business, weekend business in the whole city? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that, that again, any time we're in the road, whether it's closing a, a facility for a weekend or closing a facility overnight, we impact people. We impact business. We impact commerce. Closing a facility at night will impact some of the trucking industry in this region. So regardless of, of when we close a facility, there is, there is an impact to business. There just, there's, there so just is not a way around it. businesses that you know you're going to impact? Again, the on, the front, on the front, now I get where we are now, but I mean on the front end, why, why isn't this happening now sort of going back to what he's saying? Why not reach out to the businesses you know you're going to impact on the front end of the project? Again, the challenge, frankly, is that we will impact with these nighttime closures there are other businesses that will be impacted there also. And so the challenge is how do you, how do you uh, reach out to every potential business that could be impacted? It's a very difficult um, thing to get, really to get your hands around because they may, some businesses may be able to adjust and some may not. Um, and so again, it's, it's a, uh, there isn't a simple uh, plug and play answer for something like that. It just, the, the, the dynamics of, of uh, this region, it's a 24-hour-a-day region. How do, you, how do you get this necessary work done and, and limit the amount of impact? You know, in, in, uh, in Hampton Roads, we have, uh, Jim, what was the, what's our average number of lane closures? We average, we're averaging eight to nine hundred. Eight to nine hundred times a week, we are either taking out a lane or lanes plural or closing a facility. So it's just a it's a tremendous dynamic to try and, and, and balance that. Yeah. May I add something to that? The obviously number one is safety 
issues is the biggest criteria that's used in the road closure. And obviously there's a cost to this too. Uh, from the taxpayers in the state paying for the contract, these changes will be impacting the cost of the contract. So those are two overriding factors that go into um, the decision uh, in terms of what closed. So um, it wasn't that uh, they weren't focused on, it was more safety, mobility of regional traffic, and cost to the taxpayer. I would say those were the overriding things. What was determined there could be some options Yes, it's going to increase the cost, but there was some impact, and if we're able to do so, we thought there was a good trade-off. Do you know how much it's going to cost to increase that? Yes, for the 2014, uh, excuse me, 2013, it'll be about a million dollars additional co cost uh, to the contract, and it has to be, in 2014, there will be several million more. That right now is unknown as we get more into it, we get more efficiencies. Uh, but there will be additional cost to the contract. Just to lay it out, or is it to hear you say it, how much longer is it going to take with this new plan? In terms of, of, um, of uh, the number of, of uh, nights that, that the road will be closed, uh, we're estimating approximately 125, 125 nights that, that it will be closed between now and um, and uh, May, so over that period, about 125 nights. So that, that gives you a, a scale in terms of full cl weekend closures. That added up to about 42 nights. It was 14 closures added up to 42 nights. So again, to give you an idea, so it's about three times uh, uh, roughly the, the the number of of nights that it will take uh, to get the work accomplished. Yeah. Charlie, two and a half months. Two and a half months. Charlie, you mentioned, you know, you almost defended the old plan. It, personally, in your opinion, you know, you made a change, but do you think this is a better plan than the old one? I think it's a balance. I think that it's a balance between the concerns of the city of Portsmouth and the need to get this, this necessary work accomplished. It is less efficient than the, the, the original plan. And what I mean by less efficient, again, it, it will take us longer. It will cost some more money to get this work done. But again, that's, that, that's, that's trying to maintain that balance. So I think that this is a balance that we've been able to reach. And again, I'm very pleased that uh, we were able to reach this balance with uh, Mayor Wright in the city of Portsmouth. You mentioned efficiency. Now, shouldn't efficiency include the impact on businesses? When you make a decision like this in the future, is the first thing you're going to think of, you know, the impact rather than just trying to get the project done as quickly as possible? Have you learned that from this? I, I think that, that uh, again, the challenge is, I just mentioned that we're talking about um, 42 nights and 125 nights. And so the challenge always is, well, what is that 125, who is that 125 nights going to impact? So that's just, it's a, it's a very difficult balance, and, and, and I wish I could tell you there's a formula you can go to and get an answer. There just isn't. So in terms of looking at these things, is, is, uh, is trying to limit the, the impact to businesses something that we look at when we do work? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely it is. It's, it's again, the challenge is I, I help this business in terms of the impact, but if I – in the meantime, have, have I hurt someone else? And that's just, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, thing to try to figure out. What, what have you learned? What have you not learned from this? Well, I think that, that in terms of the, of, of the work, can it be done another way? And the answer is yes. Have we, have we uh, been able to really, a lot of folks have said, just, it's easy, just run bi-directional traffic. And, and I really pushed our folks, I said, I don't want the easy answer. I don't want the, the, the simple. I want, the, I want us to really, really look at, can we do it? Because in an emergency, in a true emergency, we may someday have to do that somewhere in Hampton Roads with one of our facilities. So, so th what did we learn? That yes, there is a way to do it. Is it an efficient way? No. Is it a way that we would, would want to operate our facilities? Absolutely not. But, but it's something that, that, that is, is available to us. 
But again, in terms of, of um, in terms of what other lessons learned, again, just continually keeping our ear to the to what's going on in the community as we're delivering these uh, these complicated projects, because uh, while we think that we spend a lot of effort working through these issues, there's sometimes things that that uh, that that we just we may not see. And so that every time that we go through this, there's an opportunity to learn. There's an opportunity to, um, to, to uh, another thing that we can think about and reach out to as we, as we deliver these projects. So you said it's all about balance and someone's going to get hurt in this. What do you say to the person who gets off work late one night and relies on that tunnel? Yeah, well, and again, what we're trying to do is it's a couple things. Uh, first of all, to give them, give them notice so that they know what's going to happen. Um, in terms of our lane closures, we've got to work on our other facilities, really specifically the Gilmerton Bridge and the High Rise Bridge, as well as the Midtown Tunnel, that we're not doing something to one of those facilities at the same time to make, to make things worse. Uh, but again, that, to, to give those folks notice, to give them opportunities to adjust their travel pattern, to maybe take a, take a different route. There are other routes across the... Uh, the Elizabeth River, some uh, probably uh, less convenient to, to the motors, but again at that time of night the, the hope is that folks can, if they know ahead of time, they can adjust their pattern and they can just go a different way. I think the public's perception is it takes a crisis for VDOT to do the right thing. I think that's the public's perception. We had the pothole issue, it took 50 cars hitting some flat tires to figure out the right answer. We have this issue, it takes the mayor screaming at the top of his lungs to get you guys to reevaluate. How can the public trust some of the future projects that you guys are, are learning from this and are, you see what I'm saying? Well, I think you, you've, you've given some examples of, of uh, other things that have happened. This, op what we were doing here, the work that we were doing, in terms of the impact to the motorists, if you were if you were go out there on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon, if you were watching on our on our video feeds off of our cameras, traffic was moving smoothly through our facilities. So in terms of a traffic impact, we did not have a a traffic impact and a traffic uh, problem with the downtown tunnel closure. We were managing it with the other facilities that were available. Traffic was moving smoothly. We were very pleased in terms of not creating delays, not creating backups. We had increased the, uh, the amount of uh, patrol, safety service patrol record service on the high-rise bridge, on the other facilities. In the event that, that an incident occurred, we had really ramped up our response teams. So, you know, again, in terms of from what was going on, we were managing the work, and it was getting done, and it was getting done very efficiently. So I don't I don't see this, what was going on here. Was there, was there an issue and a concern of the businesses? Yeah, absolutely. Did we hear them? Absolutely. Was this, uh, was this something that you would compare with, the, with other incidents? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Again, the transportation system was working well. The, the concern and the issue that the, the citizens had uh, was brought to our attention, and it was addressed. And again, I... I I'm very pleased, again, working with, uh, with Mayor Wright, that we were able to come up with a solution. And uh, you know, we look forward to getting this work done. We want to get it done as quickly as possible, get out of the road, and, and have folks be able to use this facility. Just one more. I know we already addressed it, but how much more is it going to cost? OK, in terms of the overall cost, and I'm focused on the westbound tunnel. We really haven't talked at all about the eastbound tube. But once we complete the westbound tube, we will be going to the eastbound side, and it's roughly equivalent to 42 weekends worth of work. We believe that the contractor is learning every night they're out there. They're learning efficiencies. They're learning about the tunnel and the things that they need to do to get the work done. So it's likely that we can, we can save some time there. But again, focusing on the westbound tunnel, that the cost uh, the, the, the total additional cost of going to these night times, we anticipate somewhere between two and four million dollars. We don't have a hard cost yet. Again, we, our focus has been, is it doable? Can the contractor fit the work necessary 
within that much shorter time window? And the answer is yes. It requires additional resources. It requires uh, additional coordination. But yes, they've been able to squeeze the work into that window each night. So, so again, with that, um, they'll, they'll come back to us with what they believe is the additional cost, and we will carefully review that as we do with any change to a, to a contract. 